Uh, this is the Azmio statement on police brutality. Today, Kenyans woke up to the reality of state-sanctioned execution, injuries, and even theft by police on Kenyans who exercise their constitutional uh, protected rights to protest, to picket, to assemble, and to present petitions. Across the country, families are mourning and preparing to bury their loved ones who are victims of murderous police officers. Many families are in hospitals, nursing loved ones who are injured by police. Tens of people have been hospitalized with gunshot wounds, arrows, and pangas. Some of the victims are very young school boys and girls who are not even involved in the demonstrations. Hundreds of people are also being detained in police cells or have been arraigned in court for participating in a process that is protected by our constitution. Among those in police custody is our very able member of parliament for Mavoko, the Honorable Patrick Macau. And as we speak, we've just learned of the arrest of the Honorable Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya. We demand immediate and unconditional dropping of all charges against Honorable Macau and Honorable Paranya, who has been arrested just uh, this evening, and all those who are arrested for participating in a constitutionally protected action of protesting against punitive policies. We are here today to condemn the senseless brutality and state-sanctioned execution of civilians by police, which is becoming the new normal in Kenya. We are deeply concerned at the repeated instances of police brutality against innocent and law-abiding citizens. Yesterday, this brutality gained a new notoriety. Police not only fired bullets at citizens who were gathering for a rally in Kamkunji, far from the CBD, they also fired tear gas into a primary school right here in Nairobi, exposing to mortal danger our very innocent children who had absolutely no idea or who were not involved in any way in these demonstrations. The brutality is not ad hoc. It is coordinated. It is even ethnicized. A special ethnic-based killer squad has been formed within the larger police service to brutalize and carry out summary execution of citizens in the name of protecting what they have been made to believe is their regime. This squad is taking instructions from an equally ethnic-based command structure that operates outside the official channels of the police service. As if this is not enough, a killer squad that is not part of the police service is being activated to operate as part of the police to brutalize Kenyans. This squad was in its true element yesterday. They were firing at protesters from unmarked vehicles that we know belong to the police in places like Mlolongo and Kitengela. There were murders, injuries, arrests in as diverse places, including Machakos, Kisumu, Kisi, Busia, Wote, Emali, Meru, and Kilifi, among others. We're in the process of compiling complete data from across the nation on the victims of this operation and will share the same with the country in due course. These acts of brutality are running side by side with politically supported acts of ethnic profiling in parts of the country where ethnic-based militias are being formed and facilitated to attack other communities with crude weapons with the support of the state. 
It is happening right now in parts of Nyanza, along the Kisi, Kericho, and Kisumu, Kericho borders. It is happening here in Nairobi too. Someone is working on a script of ethnic profiling, antagonism, and murder, much similar to what happened here in 1991, 1992, 1997, in the infamous tribal clashes, and also in the 2007-2008 period. The world has known of the butcher of Cambodia. This was before other butchers. Today, it will appear there is a butcher of Kenya in the making. We call on Kenyans to refuse to be intimidated in their own country. We urge Kenyans to be firm and to resist this deliberate effort to turn the National Police Service into a killer squad for, for hire by politicians and the regime suffering acutely from legitimacy deficit. We are going beyond merely condemning this pa uh, emerging pattern. We have instructed our lawyers to prepare and institute local proceedings against police officers who have gone against their duty of protecting life and property of Kenyans and instead have become a threat to the very citizens they are supposed to protect. In this regard, we are appealing to all Kenyans who have photographic or video evidence of police brutalizing citizens to share the same with us to aid the case that our legal team is working on. Going forward, we appeal to Kenyans to resort to citizen journalism and photograph and film state officers, including police and politicians, who in the course of duty abuse and brutalize their fellow citizens. Because the regime has decided to turn all institutions of the state against the citizens, we have no option but to act to protect ourselves. We are going for individual responsibility and culpability against individual officers. We are also going for individual culpability against police commanders, whom we have reason to believe know or ought to know about the illegal actions of their officers under their command. We stand in solidarity with victims of this police brutality and their families. We will be visiting uh, from tomorrow and we will offer support to offset costs and help lessen the burden on the families. We have made a decision to observe five days of mourning in solidarity with the victims and their families, during which we'll try our level best to mobilize support to help lessen the burden on the families of the victims. But we are not giving up in our quest to force William Ruto to lower the cost of living, to commit the audit of the 2022 elections to bipartisan reconstitution of the IEBC and respect for political parties, including the Jubilee Party. And this afternoon, we are pleased to learn of the High Court intervention where orders have been issued and the legitimate Secretary General of Jubilee, the Honorable Jeremiah Keown, is here with us. We'll give him a minute to share the good news with us. Consequently, we announce that our protests will resume on Wednesday, 19th July, 2023. In the meantime, we proceed with the collection of signatures against Ruto on both digital and manual platforms. We notice the Communication Authority has joined the war against Kenyans by trying to cripple our digital signature collection platform. But we will fight and soldier on while we put CA on notice. We know that the KK regime has panicked and they are trying to block this process. There is no looking back. There is no turning back. 
We see you on Wednesday. Honorable Jeremiah Kioni, please deliver the good news on Jubilee. Thank you.